And I will say, I have never had more fun in my entire banking career as I'm having right now. And part of it is working for Happy State Bank and, and uh, laughing and having fun, but also being able to put together an organization that represents the values that I hold, hold dear to me. And that is family first, community, and, and my job. And uh, the folks that we've associated with at the bank all feel the same way. Welcome in everyone to LoneStarVarsity.com. I am Zach Long, that is George Watson, and you're on the Happy State Bank Football Fever Playoff Edition as we get closer and closer to that magical moment in Arlington, Texas when the state title trophies are hoisted in the air. And last week I mouthed off to Mother Nature <laughs> and said, hey, we're ready for some winter weather. It's great football weather. Come at us with what you have. And she, and she did, did, and it caused a whole mess of problems. Yeah, thanks for that, by the way. I appreciate that. Yeah, it ca caused a bunch of problems. Uh, so much so that, I mean, that most teams had to either delay, play Saturday. Two teams played Monday. One team played Tuesday. And, you know, and, and the thing is, with the UIL, you have to get a special exemption for that because games are supposed to be done by the end of Saturday. So they had to get a special exemption. Kudos to the UIL for allowing that for, uh, for New Deal and, and for Seagraves to play on Monday, for Denver City to play on Tuesday. So, yeah, it was like Mother Nature 87 Texas High School Football 12 this past weekend. And some of these teams are going to have a real quick turnaround. Yeah. they got to get, you know, get the game tape and get going. And, uh, it can be a little tough, George, when you only have two or three days to prepare for it. Exactly. You, you don't get that normal off day where kids get to heal and, and rest up because obviously everybody's banged up and bruised up at this point of the season. You know, you, you, and it's a minimum five days, so you have to wait at least five days. So the teams that played Monday can't play again until Saturday. If Denver City had won, they lost to Bangs, they'd have had to play again on the, on Monday. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a quick turnaround. You don't get the prep time. Other teams get a little bit more prep time right. on you. And so, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how New Deal and Seagraves will be able to come out this week against two very tough opponents. And of course we lost some teams last week from our coverage area, but there's still a wealth left and we're going to get into those shortly. But up first as we continue our tradition of the Happy State Bank Players of the Week, George, basketball once again as we're getting into that yep. time of year. How about on the female side? Yeah, female side, Carly Wheeler, the outstanding uh, uh, player at Plainview, had a really good tournament for them down in Marble Falls this last weekend. Started off with like 24 points, had a 19-point game, a 14-point game. Plainview went 2-2 two and two down there. Looks like they've got a solid year ahead of them up there uh, with Coach Danny Wren. But uh, obviously Wheeler is going to be a big part of their team. She's been on that varsity team since a freshman, really growing up, still just a junior, so she's still young. But she's going to be one of the veterans on that team, and, and I look for her to have a, a really good season by the time we're talking – or by the time we're done at the end of the season. Over on the male side, nice to see Trevor Lloyd's name. Yeah, I mean, you know, talk about a kid that, that is the consummate teammate that you want, is, and that's Trevor Lloyd. Uh, here's a kid who was, who was the starting quarterback last year, gets bumped out, gets moved to a different position when Trevor Ulamot comes in, starts the year at fullback, plays there about half the season. They get some fullbacks, you know, second and third strings that step up. They move him out to slot receiver, and he has really flourished. And, and then they bring him in when Parker Bingham uh, gets hurt, uh, you know, running the jumbo package, and they bring him in to run that jumbo package, uh, you know, down on the goal line. He has three touchdowns rushing, another one. Uh, receiving in, in their playoff win against Del Valle in the, in the cold and the wet. Real, just, just a consummate teammate that you want, a really good kid, and good to see him having some success out there. Pretty class act out there yeah. for Coach Davis and the Friendship Tigers. Absolutely. Let's get into the football playoffs now. We still have a bunch of teams left, and the biggest surprise last week, of course, was the weather putting a pretty good <laughs> butt whooping on all of us. Yeah. But there are the, there's some surprises at this point in the playoffs. What sticks out to you as maybe the biggest among them? You know, I think the biggest among them probably uh, would have to be Estacado. Uh, you know, here's a team that was four and six going into the playoffs. You know, it backed its way in technically. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you go back and look at it, wasn't really playing real well at the end of the season. Lost to Andrews, lost to Shallow Water, or lost to Cooper and lost to Andrews, excuse me. And, and so they really were having a confidence problem, I think. But lo and behold, the playoffs get here, those guys get to where they want to be, and suddenly, you know, they, they beat Perryton, be, well, win a four-point game up there in Amarillo, then go down and, and beat Snyder for a second time this year. So, yeah, right now, you know, Estacado's playing really good football and, and surprising because they really kind of started from nothing. I think they're probably the biggest surprise. I think you got to throw Seagraves in there as a surprise. Absolutely. No, you, uh, you know, nobody really knew about them going into the season, but everybody knows about them and Corey Kyle now. So, yeah, there's a couple of surprises that, uh, you know, one of them could actually survive another week uh, if things 
go right this weekend. And at this point in the playoffs, of course, there are no secrets. They know who nope. these teams are. They've had plenty of times to scout them. Yep. Let's get into some of the teams we have left and look at some of these games and go ahead and make your pick on them, George. Let's start first with our 4A team left, our lone 4A team yep. left. Friendship, they get Birdville. Yeah, Friendship, you know, this is going to be their strongest test they've had this year, at least since, uh, you know, the, like the third week of the season when they played El Dorado because they're going to go up against an outstanding tailback. Xavier Turner got offered by Incarnate Word and, and their assistant coach, Ricky Williams. You might have heard of him. Uh, have. Did a lot of running down in Austin. Uh, you know, 2,100 yards and 49 touchdowns. He, he is kind of their go-to guy. But Friendship's playing very well defense. Their, their run defense is really their strength. I think they're going to come out on top. I think their run offense is going to be stronger. I'm going to go with Friendship for another week in this one. The Estacada Matadors, they're going to have to work a little harder this week if they're going to surprise Graham. Yeah, they're going to have to work real hard because Graham is an absolute buzzsaw. A, a very good balanced team, a number five or number three team in the state in 3A. And so, you know, Estacado, as surprising as they've been, they've got their work cut out for them. I just don't know if they're going to have enough to match offensively. I'm going to go with Graham in this one. Last week, the Shallow Water Mustangs finally put a nail yeah. in the coffin of Monahan's Huge win for that program on a very cold night in Denver City. They get Vernon now. Now here comes the, the, the big question. Can Shallow Water win a game motivated only by just winning a game and not the playoff team that, you know, that's knocked them out for two years in a row? Uh, you know, th this is going to be an interesting game. Vernon is a solid team, but Shallow Water is playing really well right now. I don't see anybody slowing them down, at least not this weekend. Go with the Mustangs. An outstanding season thus far for the Abernathy Antelopes, yeah. George. They get Cisco in Class 2A. Yeah, another team that, you know, that's highly ranked number five in the state in 2A. Talked with Coach Daly this afternoon or this morning about him, you know, and, he, and he's, he compared him to Canadian. And Canadian really had a, had a uh, good game with Abernathy. Abernathy struggled with, uh, with Canadian in, in all phases. Could be another struggle this week. I think it's probably going to be enough of a struggle they're not going to make it. I'm going to go with Cisco in this one. Let's go down to some good old-fashioned South Plains Panhandle throwdowns, mm -hmm. which are usually about 15 degrees when we've covered these in the past. And you see these names and we get excited because it's been yeah. some really good games over the last six years of my time here. Let's start first with the New Deal Lions. They get Stratford. Yeah, you want to talk about the coaching tree. Here, here it goes right here. Both uh, Ron Mayo at, at New Deal, Eddie Metcalf at Stratford played, uh, played with each other at WT. So, so they know each other very well. They know, they know their coaching styles. They know their teams. This is not the first time either of them have met each other in the playoffs either. But the way New Deal is playing, you know, they got off a slow start against Seymour, but I think they recovered enough. I think they, they know what they're doing. They're confident in what they're doing right now. This is a motivated, talented team. I'm going to go with New Deal one more week in this one. The Sundown Roughnecks are becoming quite the pain to get rid of in the playoffs. It's a team you really have a yeah. hard time doubting right now. They get a tough task, though, with Stanford. With Stanford, yeah, and, and it's interesting Stanford team. You know, this is a team that won the state championship last year in their division, lost a lot of their players, you know, including Hagen Hutchinson, the outstanding quarterback, but they've come back strong. They're 10-1, and one. Bo Wimbley playing well again, uh, you know, for Stanford right now. You know, it's, it's going to be a tough task for Sundown. You mentioned it's, it's hard. You just can't get rid of them sometimes, but I think this is the round that's going to happen. I've been wrong before. I would love to be wrong about this one, but I think Stanford takes this one. The surprising Seagraves team we talked about earlier, Booker has to deal with them now. Yeah, Booker's got to deal with them, and, and Seagraves has to deal with Booker. This is a very good Booker, uh, Booker Kiowa team uh, you know, that, that Seagraves is going to be tested by, but we all know what Seagraves is about. It's about giving it to Corey Kyle and, and letting him do his thing, and really nobody has stopped him yet this season. It's going to be a tough one, but I think Seagraves has a chance to pull this one out in the end. Barely go with the Eagles. We have to every week pick a Happy State game, Happy State Bank game of the weekend. Yeah. Really not fair this week because all these <laughs> games are outstanding. Yeah. But we're going to hone in on this one. Our Happy State Bank game of the week is going to be Cooper and Burnett. Yeah, I was out, out at Cooper today talking with uh, some of the players, and, and it's, it's amazing how supremely confident these guys are right now. They're confident in what they're doing. They're confident in what they have done. They beat a, a good Abilene Wiley team, and that has just filled them with, with confidence right now. They're going up against a Burnett team. Not many people are going around here are going to know what Burnett does, they, you know, because they're down around the Austin area. So, uh, you know, it, it's a team that is going to throw it all over the field, kind of like a Hereford or a Lubbock High, something that, that Cooper really hasn't seen in about 10 weeks, but you know, the, the, talking with Coach Cat Wingle, talking with the players, they're confident about it. They, they know how to stop it, and really, they're just going to go out and concentrate on what they do. I know it sounds like a cliche; we hear it all the time. The coaches say it, but but really, I think Cooper is really kind of living that right now. 
They're just going to go out and play their game. And what their game is, is Stanton Keene running that offense, giving it to a lot of the other playmakers like Dakota Grubin, Jordan Salas, Evan McHugh in both the running game and the passing game, and then playing good, solid defense. I think Cooper goes down to Brownwood. I think they get the job done. They'll make school history. They'll tie the, uh, the, the school record for wins with 11. Uh, in the 30 or in the 70 some odd year history of the school, they've only won 11 games one time, one other wow, time. Absolutely. So I, I think I think they tie it this week. I'm going to go with the Pirates one more week in this one. George, an outstanding list of games here. Potential for a lot of big time football games yep. on Friday and Saturday across the state of Texas. And of course, we'll have full coverage of all these games over at LoneStarVarsity.com and LubbockOnline.com in the newspaper, on the iPad, on your mobile device. We are the essential source for South Plains football. And thankfully, the weather doesn't look like it's going to be a factor this well, week, yeah, unless, you clean, unless you jinx it again. I'm done. I Don't not, do it. I'm not messing with Mother Nature. I do not <laughs> need another butt whooping like that. Until that time, though, we're going to be out there. We'll have full coverage of those games. You're on LoneStarVarsity.com. That is George Watson. I am Zach Long. We'll see you next time.